uh, ETEC, as I said before, were the responsible for the work at X3, that is the learning development uh, the, and the development of the learning units. So I'll go through a little bit of the uh, main uh, inputs that we had or and the, and the aims and targets. So the main goal for uh, this section of this big project was to develop uh, learning content and learning uh, units for the actual training uh, providing uh, uh, courses that already exist. So we, one of the goals of this project wasn't to create a new course, a new uh, avenue, a new profession. It was just uh, gathering up all the actual um, courses and, and education provision that already exists and find out all the gaps so uh, that we could to uh, fill in with this learning unit. So um, at the end of this uh, study, at the end of this uh, market study uh, that was um, done by uh, other colleagues at the University of Zagreb uh, in World Package 2, we um, discovered where, what, what were the skills and what were the abilities that were needed to be uh, upskilled and then from there, we developed the 12 learning unit descriptors that we published on March this year. So um, at the end of this uh, study, we ended up with 12 learning units that range from EQFs 4 to 7. So uh, here you, you will see some examples of some uh, data that we got. So uh, here you will see some skills and some um, abilities. So for each field, for uh, NZ in green and BIM in blue. So our objective was to uh, upskill this education provision to a 3.5, a 3.5 being between a practical application and applied theory. So all those skills that were already in that level, like, like these ones, like what is BIM, the, what, what are the BIM requirements, what are the uh, industry scope for BIM. These were, there were already education provision in, in Europe regarding these tasks, so, or these skills. So we didn't try to upskill these ones, but we uh, find out that a lot of NZEP skills were under the, the level that we wanted to achieve. So that's what um, defined those uh, 12 learning units and that's why we decided on those 12 learning units. So if I go uh, to the next slide, you will see uh, each individual learning unit. I made a little bit of um, uh, awareness of which uh, institution in the consortium of the BNZ was responsible for that development. That doesn't mean that all of the partners didn't do the part, it's just they were the responsible to write down or develop that learning unit, but all the partners in the BMZ uh, consortium give their feedback and information for each market on, on this project. So the first learning unit was uh, how to work collaboratively to achieve MZ. This was one of the learning units that were more needed. Um, a lot of people uh, know uh, BIM, the, the, the the, the aspects of, of BIM or the main goal of BIM, but they don't know how to apply it, uh, how I can work with the architects, the engineers, the, 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 the material providers at the same time in the same project. So that's what we intended with this learning unit. Uh, this learning unit have these five topics that you can see here, some NZ fundamentals, some BIM fundamentals, and then the the collision between these two walls. So um, these learning units very theoretical. It's not there's a lot some practical exercises, but it's all uh, quizzes and very easy to follow. Um, as you may see during these uh, uh, descriptions of learning units, we never intended to be these uh, learning units self-studied. These learning units were uh, designed to be blended, so some parts would would be online, some parts would be face-to-face -face with the trainer or online with the trainer. So um, uh, some of the aspects of the learning unit could be self-learned, could be self-assessed, but some of them require a trainer behind it. That's why I said before that the main goal of these learning units 
these are just learning packages for other providers of education that can take this information and put it in an already existing uh, course. So um, you may see some examples like, like these slides talking about the, the, uh, the typical new values of each uh, element of the building. Not only here, we, you can see Spain, but you will see Croatian values, you will see um, Ireland values, Hungarian values. So you can explain or even show that, uh, that the climates are completely different around Europe. These values that, that could change, but the, the um, methodology and how you can calculate all this never changes. It's the same thing. Um, and it doesn't matter if the U value is higher or lower, it's just you, to achieve and set in that climate, you need to achieve these, these U values, right? So it, these are some examples to put a little bit of numbers for this learning unit. This learning unit was designed to be 12 hours face-to-face uh, -face with the trainer and, uh, or online training. And the other 20, 20 hours of this learning unit is self-learned. So, most than most uh, more than half of the hours for this learning unit are designed to be self-learned. So it's not just that the learning unit can't be um, self-assessed, but some of it is just self-learned or self-assessed. So um, this will happen with all of them. Uh, I'm just waiting, stopping in this one, but uh, all of them have the same structure. All of them are online or blended, and all of them have a part of hours that are online or face-to-face -face with a trainer and another part of hours that are just self-learned. So uh, in the next uh, learning unit, you can see um, the beam and Z for workers. You will uh, start to see that the targets for these learning units are completely different. These are, this learning unit is not for engineers, it's not for architects. These are, this is for the people that is working on the site. So that's also one of the main objectives of, of this uh, development that we could touch as many um, uh, targets, target groups as, as we could. So this one is designed especially for those workers that are on site and need to be working on, uh, on BIM because uh, they're, they're gonna be asked to, be work, uh, to work with the BIM methodology and to be collaborative with uh, architects, engineers, and, uh, and people with higher education. So it's just uh, here you can see some topics, how to navigate a BIM model, how to, uh, what's the BIM and NZ procedure, what's the communication uh, uh, tools that you may be using, uh, how, digitalize, how to digitalize the information that you are gathering on site. So these have a lot of different tools like Trello, like some uh, coordinating tools that are, most of them are free or with a uh, with, um, uh, very low uh, cost. So uh, the assessment, it's also some, some quizzes, but there are also some self-studies, some uh, tasks to be done. So it's a, it's a long learning unit. This uh, learning unit is uh, eight hours face-to-face -face with a trainer and 24 hours self-learned. So there's a lot of information in this learning unit to be to be to to study and to 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 use for your uh, professional life. So some uh, examples of the slides could be these ones. As you can see, uh, I was talking about uh, Trello, for example, but there's many other uh, tools in this learning unit. So this one is explaining how to structure a Trello with this uh, object in mind, for example, or uh, some aspects, very basic fa uh, facts and aspects from uh, knowledge works, some practices, so they can know how the model is, uh, can be navigated, how to uh, uh, forward information for, for the, the, the design team or the engineer team. So these are some of the examples of the, the slides of this learning unit. Next learning unit, uh, is focused on the NZ realization and commissioning. Uh, this learning unit is so big that we had to divide it in two parts. This is the first part on the learning unit four that it's uh, regarding building systems and, and, and uh, 
uh, um, uh, automatizations uh, uh, in a different uh, learning unit. So this learning unit is just talking about the building envelope at the and the uh, dynas. So uh, we are talking about building physics. We are talking about thermal bridges, how to control air dynas, what kind of tests you can do, like floor door tests. Uh, what are you? Um, what you will need to be checking so you ensure that that building, whenever you finish it, is an NZ building. So here you can see a lot of, of uh, examples and, and, and activities. Here there's not too many uh, tests. This is a more practical learning unit. You will be learning some things like regarding uh, thermal bridges, how to calculate them and how to uh, alleviate, alleviate them. So this is a very interesting learning unit that it's very needed for, for, for NZ. So this one was developed by, um, the previous one was de de developed by LIT and this one is developed for the University of Zagreb. So uh, these are some examples of slides, some theoretical information on what's, what's the meaning of uh, the, 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 the isolation the, for, for a building, uh, how it could change with climate, these thermal bridges, how a beam object uh, should be addressed or how it should be designed. So there's a, a lot of, of information in this learning unit. Very, very uh, interesting learning unit. This one is nine hours um, with a trainer and 23 hours at learned. So there's plenty of information. None of these learning units and that I'm talking about of these um, 12 learning units are under 30 hours of, of study. So they, are, they have a lot of information, um, a very good information, let me say. So next learning unit is the second part. This is the building services and the smart technologies. So it's just following up the previous one, talking about building envelope. Uh, here we're talking about the systems and the services. So we are talking about lightning, we're talking about cooling heat pumps, we're talking about safety, and even energy performance, some automatizations in some sense or so. Uh, this one was developed by, by Ubuntu University in Budapest. And uh, the same thing, it's here we, we can find out uh, more tests, some uh, uh, exercises. Here is more difficult to, to, to do exercises. So uh, we didn't want to get into uh, uh, services uh, engineer because that's something that's very focused in, in, a, in a career that uh, it's not needed or it's already uh, good uh, explaining you know, all the education provision. So that's just information that you may need to have. So you need to address and set. Um, these are some examples as the other ones uh, talking about climate zones, talking about an example of a beam building with all the, the services uh, 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 put it in, in the building. This, this example is huge. It has a lot of information. Some um, renewable energies, how are, are they addressed, the importance of the illuminance, uh, a lot of things that um, regarding NZEP and regarding um, health uh, aspects that are addressed in this learning. Uh, this learning unit is 10 hours uh, training for a trainer and 24 hours self-learn. Then we go to learning unit five. This learning unit is the quality assurance of that uh, design or of that commissioning. Um, it's just gathering up all the things that a building envelope should be checking and uh, a lot of things that a uh, uh, building service should be checking and gathering up in, in just one learning unit. So, because this learning unit could be done by people in, in, uh, in the construction site and the other ones are more focused on the design team. So we wanted to separate those two people in different, uh, in different learning units. So here is just quality control, certification of products and coordination of the quality in the construction. Uh, you can see at here uh, group interactive activities. You can see also some uh, poster design, some uh, quizzes, um, some uh, dialogues activities, for example, regarding the light. Uh, well, a lot of uh, different activities and the distribution of the assessment for the uh, final score. This one is eight hours 
with a trainer and 24 self learn. Um, these are some examples for that uh, um, learning unit. Let's go to learning unit six. This is the B model uses during construction. We are not talking here about budgeting. We are not talking about LCA. We are just talking on what are the beam uses during uh, uh, the construction in the construction site. So here we're talking about the PEP. We are talking about the 3D coordination, some um, clash detection, some uh, more important aspects during the, the, the building phase than the uh, quantification that it's uh, not a separate uh, learning unit. Here you can see one assessment for uh, BEP, one for class detection, and another one for aim delivery strategies. So these are activities that can, should be done to assess these uh, learning units. This is just a recommendation. This is just what BMZ um, recommend to trainers to, to do. It doesn't mean that it has to be this assessment. We are offering not only the learning material, but we are offering also the assessment if you don't have it. But normally what I end up happening is that this learning unit or this learning material is um, mixed with more learning material of, or of an existing course and the assessment is just done by the trainer. So this is just a recommendation if this learning unit is done by itself. Uh, here you can see some uh, examples, um, talking about the 3D coordination between teams, uh, talking about the class detection as well, and some of the classification for the different uh, aspects of the building, how to, to the nomenclature of the, of the elements. So um, it's very, also very, very interesting. The next learning unit, that seventh learning unit, is talking about the beam uses, but to take out information from them. So it's just this, the specification and quantification. We are talking here being 4D and 5D. We're talking about time and cost. So we are talking about planning um, and the budgeting of a, of a building. Here um, we are explaining some softwares, for example. So can, how can you do it? But also how should be structured the model to extract that information? So here there's a lot of uh, assignments and some tests also for um, different uh, models. So, and these are some examples, some more um, focused in just a, um, a tool, like assigning quantities to, a, to, a, to an element or just talking about what is a beam, uh, of what, bill of quantities or uh, um, and the codification of the bill uh, quantities and so on. So, um, I will wait. I, I saw a question pop up, but I, I can see it. Uh, I finish and, and, and I can answer the question. So if you want to write questions in the chat, it's okay. Um, the eighth learning unit is about the standardization of the model. Uh, this learning unit was done also by the University of Zagreb. This is just how the information should be structured in, BIM, in a BIM model so it's easy to explore. Uh, all the aspects of all the information that you may need for an NZ uh, design. So it, it's not talking about um, an, a specific uh, model, it's just talking about the theoretical part of it, the international standards, how to standardize the data, how to have good um, um, uh, um, procedure with your model so it's not um, and difficult later on to explore that information. You may see here a lot of quizzes and, and some assignments to be done with an example that it's also provided in the learning unit. And here you may see some explanations on the on uh, legislation, some um, uh, concurrent constructions, some that different uh, important aspects of that uh, standardization of the model. Then we have learning unit nine talking about the, the design and export of the uh, building uh, model. So it could be a building energy model. So we are not talking on how to draw this building because that's already explaining lots of material already uh, in the market. 
we are just talking of the 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 most difficult part or the or the part that it's most uh, it's it gets a lot of the times confused that is the, the export of the the model. Not all the energy simulation uh, softwares uh, have the same input. They uh, normally they read JPEG mail, but some others read IFC, and you need to be very uh, particular when you are exporting these kind of uh, of um, files because it's it's easy to 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 miss parts and easy to to um, not do it properly, and then you have um, uh, not good uh, values on the simulation. So this is very focused on the energy analysis workflow and how to export these uh, elements, these models to one, uh, uh, a good uh, type file that could be read by other softwares like Open Studio or Design Builder. So here it's some examples on how to be done. There's a lot of videos, a lot of uh, slides on step-by-step uh, -step how you should do it uh, uh, for, for these kind of exports. So you see here some examples. What is JVXML? What's the difference between the, both of them? Do they have different information? It's easier to, uh, what format should I be using? So it's, it has a theoretical part, but it also has a lot of uh, technical and, and practical part on how to do it step by step. So it could be done with any um, B model, but obviously, there's some parts like the like the room generation that you may be done you, you may be doing before the obvious we are talking about how to do that but um, if, if you have to do it in more detail that's more uh, material that is uh, that talks exclusively uh, of that then this learning unit 10 this is the energy simulation this is the last one to be done uh, as you can see, we have already the assessment, but uh, the, the percentages for the final score is uh, still pending, is to be determined. But um, this is just talking about the, ba the basics of the CAD features related to simulation, also what's the, how to evaluate the energy balance and the energy saving options and how to do the energy simulation. So it's just, it's in this unit, for example, there's a BIM model already done. It's one of the material that we provide, and it's just uh, with all the information needed to do this energy simulation. So it's not, it could be a part of another learning unit that works with the student until they have that, that model, but this learning unit in particular, we already have an example model already there. So you can do all the tricky things that the presentations and the, and the slides in this learning unit uh, provides. So, um, it already has the inputs, it's just uh, evaluating the outputs of that energy simulation. So here you can see some examples uh, talking about, for example, modeling the, the shades on the building, how to control the solar effects, uh, 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 showing solar issues like dates, uh, uh, different uh, weathers or whatever, and, they, and even the shape of the building, how, how can it affect its orientation and, and the openings of that of that uh, field to the energy simulation. So it has a part that it's uh, theoretical, but it's also very practical, this learning it. And these two last uh, learning units, we wanted to touch a little bit facility management because it's something that uh, regarding INZ model or INZ design is one of the most important ones. So, um, and we found out during that uh, uh, market analysis that facility, fa facility management with BIM is practically uh, not used in Europe. If, if there's some places that they are more advanced and maybe they have this already a very, very, uh, uh, they have it applied on some models, but it's not commonly known how to do it. So here we're just talking in, in this learning unit 11. Um, What's the what's a, uh, the introduction of facility management? How to gather this information from a from an existing building or for a designed uh, new building? 
and how to digitalize all this information so you can follow up each stages during the, the, man the facility management. So here you have some also some examples of, uh, of the activities, the assessments that are done in this learning and some slides uh, regarding this. So uh, we are here we talk about, a little bit about the CMMS, the, the computerized maintenance management systems, uh, how we are not talking here, how are they connected to the BIM model, but in the next learning unit, the learning unit 12, the last one for this uh, project is, um, Let me now. Uh, these we are talking exclusively uh, of uh, beam models in these kind of servers. So we are talking about um, how to uh, uh, start with the NAS build and how to put it in a facility management tool. How the data structure should should be done. Uh, the data structure that the CMMS asks you to have. So. We are having here um, examples for for COBE standards, for example. For example, we are having some how to separate some systems. So depending on the the facility or the, the tasks that you have to do to those systems, you may need to be to, to separate those um, differently that you have it drawn in a in a B model. How to transform? How to get a COBE through a, an IFC? Uh, the KPIs of maintenance, so it's a, it's practical in some parts and very theoretical in others, but it's uh, something that we thought it was uh, very useful for the future of the construction sector regarding um, energy um, efficiency. 